Greetings to all, what on earth is unfolding in the United Kingdom? The situation reeks of an authoritarian overreach that borders on madness. It evokes memories of the Yellow Vests movement in France, marked by brutal police repression sanctioned from the highest levels, with global outcry beginning to echo in response. On the domestic front, figures like Nigel Farage are valiantly attempting to carve out a path of resistance against this descent into tyranny. His fight is nothing less than a battle for national liberation, and on this matter, he is undeniably right. We are witnessing a struggle for sovereignty and freedom of expression, where figures like Elon Musk are stepping onto the global stage to challenge this growing totalitarianism. Detractors may dismiss Brexit as a futile endeavor, but they couldn't be more wrong. The British have made significant strides in reclaiming their national sovereignty, a journey that has been more successful than many might acknowledge. Brexit, like a potential Frexit for France, is a necessary but insufficient step toward true national liberation, the battle for sovereignty, while Brexit was essential, it is merely the beginning of a much larger battle, the fight against the globalist elite, the oligarchy that transcends national borders. The act of leaving the European Union was a monumental move, a first step towards regaining control. However, the responsibility now lies with the British themselves. They are no longer shackled by supranational European regulations or censorship, but the fight is far from over. The distinction here is crucial and should not be underestimated. Now, let us delve deeper into the current situation. The United Kingdom is displaying concrete examples of authoritarianism that should alarm anyone familiar with similar events in France. The globalist agenda is insidious, aiming to divide, demoralize, and ultimately suppress the will of the people. But resistance is not futile. There are those who fight back, who stand against this tide, and perhaps this will serve as a wake-up call to others, including in France. Thank you for sharing this video and subscribing to this channel, your support is vital in spreading these messages far and wide. Totalitarian madness in the UK, let's turn our attention now to the UK's descent into what can only be described as totalitarian madness, reminiscent of the yellow vests and the authoritarian overreach during the COVID-19 pandemic. The recent events in the UK are a stark reminder of the dangers posed by globalism. To fully grasp the gravity of the situation, we must revisit the origins of this unrest. It all began with the shocking assassination of three innocent young women during a dance class in the town of Southport on July 29. This heinous act ignited a wave of protests across the country, with citizens proclaiming enough is enough. Their frustration was directed at the unchecked immigration policies that they believe have spiraled out of control. This sentiment does not imply that all immigrants are to blame, far from it. Indeed, many foreign nationals stand with the patriots, joining in our protests. The real issue lies in the way globalists have exploited mass immigration to undermine the very fabric of national sovereignty, the iron fist of repression, in response to the protests, the new prime minister, Keir Starmer, has unleashed a wave of repression that is nothing short of draconian. As reported by La Libre Belgique on August 8, the first prison sentences for those involved in the Liverpool and Southport riots have been handed down, with penalties ranging from 20 months to three years. The mere act of insulting a police officer now carries a 20-month sentence. According to the UK's National Police Chiefs Council, as of August 9, 741 individuals have been arrested and 302 charged, with more arrests expected. Euronews reported on August 7 that an additional 500 prison places were being prepared to accommodate the influx of detainees, leading to the early release of other prisoners. This policy has already resulted in tragedy. As the Daily Mail reported, one mother was left devastated when she learned that her son's killer, convicted of a previous crime, had been released after just six months to make room for new inmates, the censorship of social media, but the repression doesn't stop there. The UK government has begun targeting social media users with draconian penalties for what it deems inappropriate or insightful comments. On August 9, Sky News reported that a man was sentenced to 20 months in prison for posts on his Facebook page, while another individual received a staggering 38-month sentence for similar online activity. Videos have surfaced showing British police officers arriving at people's homes, arresting them, and taking them to the station for their social media posts. This echoes the authoritarian measures seen in Canada and Australia during the COVID pandemic, where individuals were arrested for posting about vaccines or masks. The parallels are chilling, hypocrisy and double standards, the hypocrisy of the UK government's actions is glaring. 
During the 2011 Black Lives Matter riots in the UK, police officers were seen kneeling before protesters, a stark contrast to the heavy-handed tactics now being employed. This double standard is further highlighted by the case of Ricky Jones, a Labour Party official who was filmed at a recent protest inciting violence by suggesting that protesters should have their throats slit. Although he was eventually dismissed and arrested, his case has not been expedited in the same way as those of the anti immigration protesters. On August 7, Sky News reported that the Director of Public Prosecutions for England and Wales issued a warning that sharing documents online about the riots could constitute an offence. The London police chief has gone even further, threatening to pursue individuals posting from abroad with the possibility of extradition. This is a brazen attempt to extend the UK's authoritarian reach beyond its borders, but it will undoubtedly be met with global resistance, a draconian ruling. One of the most alarming developments came from a Belfast court, as reported by The Telegraph on August 9. The judge declared that whether an active participant or a curious onlooker, these are the judge's words, anyone involved in the disturbance will be imprisoned. The notion that merely observing a protest could result in imprisonment is a chilling indication of how far the UK government is willing to go in its quest to suppress dissent. Prime Minister Keir Starmer has made his intentions clear. On August 9, he tweeted, My number one priority is to ensure the safety of our communities through our police forces. Those who engage in violence, online and offline, will face the full force of the law. The fact that he mentions online activity first is telling, it suggests that the government views social media posts as a greater threat than actual physical violence. This prioritization is not only absurd but deeply troubling, the role of Brexit. Now, let's talk about Brexit, because it is crucial to understand its role in the current situation. Some have argued that Brexit was a mistake, that the British people made the wrong choice. But in reality, Brexit was absolutely the right decision. It was not just about leaving the European Union, it was about taking the first step towards reclaiming national sovereignty. The turmoil we see today is not a sign of failure but a sign of transition, a transition that was always going to be difficult. The British are now confronting globalism head-on, a battle that those still shackled to the EU cannot fully engage in. Remaining within the European Union would have meant continued subjugation to a supranational authority that prioritizes the interests of a global elite over those of individual nations. The British, having extricated themselves from this web, are now facing the real challenge, standing up to globalism itself. A crucial battle, why was Brexit so important? Because it allowed the British to step onto the battlefield of globalism, a higher tier of struggle that those still within the EU have not yet reached. The British are now fighting the real battle, the battle for national sovereignty against a globalist elite that seeks to erode it. This is why Brexit was necessary and this is why the British are ahead of the game. Their fight is our fight, and it is a fight that we must all engage in if we are to preserve our freedoms. Conclusion To those who would argue that Brexit was a mistake, that the UK would have been better off within the EU, I say this, leaving the EU was a vital first step. And now the real work begins. The British are proving that national sovereignty can be re-established, that it is possible to resist the tide of globalism. It is not an easy fight, but it is a fight that must be fought. Musk and Farage have understood this, and they are leading the charge. The British have taken the first step, it is now up to them to see it through. Brexit was not the end but the beginning of a much larger battle, a battle that we must all take part in.